Hey guys, how's it going? It is Kyra here with another Infinite Magic Grade video. And in today's video, I want to show you guys the hardest content in Infinite Magic Grade by far. So this is Sword Harbor Guards, Stage 24, Faction Abyss, and probably all Faction Abyss is just incredibly hard when it comes to this. And I feel like this is probably one of the easier factions here because it has Catherine in it. That's why I wanted to target this because Catherine's the best character in the game, in my opinion, or very close to it. So why not? focus on Catherine and build my team around that. Yes, there's RNG and the other characters around here. These are very good characters. And then also I have Ben Austin, which is another guaranteed character if you decide to choose him. So there's at least a core here that everyone can get and they're very good. Then there's RNG around that. But that's why I chose this team here for Sword Harbor Guards. And I've been planning this since like probably the first couple weeks of the account. And this is how far I've gotten. I got stage 24. They did say that they made it easier, which they did. And then a couple hours later, they reverted it. I don't know if that was intentional or accidental, but it is back to being incredibly difficult. I will show you just how difficult it is here in a moment. And so this is also something another content creator in Karzak was having issues with. He has less characters than me, but he has more exclusives and then ends up getting destroyed by the boss just like I did. So it is very difficult content. Here, let me show you guys the recording here. Because I want you guys to get an idea because I feel like this really puts into perspective just how difficult this is. Then we can go from there on what's the best way to progress here in this game. Okay, so here it is. Being able to take a hit from this guy, like if I didn't have my A2 and my A3, and this is Catherine uh, exclusive three, I can take two turns. My A2 allows me to go again for my A3. And if I didn't have that, I think this would be borderline impossible. So we have this and then... I've done this multiple times and I wasn't able to, because the, the waves are hard too. There's a, a pretty hard poison wave right before this. Finally got everyone alive, but more importantly, I was able to get everyone alive with Catherine's uh, cooldowns down, like ready to go. So then she does her, so here I'll just show you guys. So she actually does her moves here. And then look at that damage right there. It's like crazy damage. So it full shield like this, not even Mark Tower 30 does that much damage. To give you an idea so this is like way harder content than any of that i don't think any of the the dungeons maybe some of the the uh, artifact dungeons do this kind of damage but so far it we're stuck to using one faction and it's this difficult for some reason it's crazy hard at 24 i don't know why it's ramping up so hard this is just nuts in my opinion so what ends up happening is i get crit over here here let's let's move over here and i'll show you like look how big this crit is so he has no no ramping mechanics, none at all. It doesn't matter how many turns he goes, he's always going to do the same. Uh, his A3 does 400%. His um, A2 does uh, 200% plus a bleed. His A1 does 300% and targets a single person and can like fear. No ramping at all. And this is his crit right here. Boom. 400,000 crit. Just completely destroyed Ben Austin. You can argue that I need more health and I just don't have the gear to be able to give him more health and enough effect hit and enough speed to be able to survive that. But everyone else survived it. Uh, Melina would have died. You know, probably Zia would have died if it all crit. Uh, yes, you can probably take other uh, other characters here. I forget the name of this dude, but he's the guy that's uh, A1 right there. He reduces the chance of critting. I don't know what the chance of a PVE person is to crit. So maybe he just locks out the potential of critting and he's the secret to all this. I'm not sure, but Got crit there, completely one shot, and then uh, carry goes, and then completely one shots Melina. So that was the run right there, and very difficult content. Whole point in showing that is that even if you have a full team here and a good team, it's still going to be very difficult. And what if I beat stage 24? I just get bodied by stage 25. The point in all this, not to complain, because I was thinking about this, like at first I was like, yeah, as I was doing this, I was like, absolutely, this needs to get nerfed, like 100% needs to get nerfed. and I still think that for the most part, but I just wanted to kind of put it into perspective looking at how this game has done it versus other games. So Raid and Ace are both games of the same genre. And I would say Ace did it to where people were able to beat all the content in like a week or two, like all the dungeons getting farmed in a week or two, which I don't think is good for the game at all. And then I think that's terrible. I think there should be a lot of progression. I think Raid did it right in the sense that it is... It was difficult and it took us a while, but eventually we were able to slowly beat like Dragon 20 and then it got easier and easier and we got faster and faster as we got better at gear, but it, it was a struggle. It took a while because whole point of these games is to like 
have problems that are challenging enough to where it's actually engaging. And then you, when you finally beat it, it's rewarding. If, it, if you can beat it in a week or two, it's not really that rewarding to be able to beat the challenge, in my opinion. And now in Raid, there's stage 25, like there's Dragon 25, whatever. And what it, essentially what IMR is, is if Raid launched with Dragon 25 initially, and so how hard that would be. It took us forever to be able to beat Dragon 20. I remember my first Dragon 20 clear back in like, you know, years ago when I was playing Raid, it was like a six minute clear. It took forever and I was like really happy that I got it. And then now uh, I was getting it down to like a 30 second or like, you know, you were speed running it all. So it's like a massive, maybe like a minute. I forget specifically what team I was using for Dragon 20, but massively quicker and to be able to do that. And imagine if Dragon 25 was on launch in that game. It'd be crazy. And so essentially that is what I feel like the equivalent of that is in this game. Maybe this is a little harder. It, it could potentially be a little harder in my opinion. I'm not sure. So it, it kind of, a part of me feels like it should be nerfed, but a part of me also feels like it's really cool that we have all of this progression that's going to take a very long time for most people to finally be able to build up towards. Maybe it's a little discouraging because you're seeing all the stuff you can't do all in the beginning. What if they had like, you know, all the way up to like Abyss, uh, Faction Abyss 25. And I'm like, okay, I'm failing on the second hardest stage. But they have all the way to 30. So I'm, I'm failing way earlier than I think would be necessary. But we're only a few months into the game. It kind of makes sense that I'm failing that early, especially if they're going to release way more content than that that we can beat in this game. Because I think because this game is so much newer than Raid and Raid's been around so long, they need to be able to give us a good value proposition by giving us a game that has way more stuff to do initially. Like for example, how we're getting the ability to do like program our skills on auto initially, whereas that took like two to three years in Raid, for example. So those things should be expected. But at the same time, I do think they need to tweak the balancing in this game because of the purpose of why we're gonna be farming the Faction Abyss. Because the whole point of this is to get materials for Auras. And auras make our characters stronger. So if we're the whole purpose of this is to get auras for our characters, we we want to be able to take that and take that into other content to make us stronger. And I feel like if that's the case, this shouldn't be the hardest content. And I feel like at the moment, it's by far the hardest content. And I don't think I, I would love to hear if there's like some massive whale out there that has been able to beat stage 30. I don't think there's a single person that can beat stage 30. It'd be really cool to see. Um, I don't even think maybe 28 at that pace. You know, it's just crazy hard. So it's, I don't think that should be the hardest content. I think what we should be building towards is there should probably be a tower in the game, like some kind of thing that we do every month. I think maybe they're doing something like that. But I think the thing that should be difficult is being able to, like, this is the thing we should be working towards. This is maybe not the hardest thing, but like being able to two key this, being able to one key this should be the thing that, we're, that we are working towards and using those tokens to be able to do that would, would make sense to me. And it's just weird that, how hard it is like we can't even get to that point like where we can farm those realistically yet and then be able to be able to take those auras into this and then be able to push this and be able to do the 400 million damage because i bet there's people out there there's crazy whales that can do like a two key 400 million because then it would kind of invalidate it what's the point of farming all those auras if we can already do the 400 million i'm not sure where all the whales are at on this i don't know if uh, clans have even opened this yet but it just feels a little backwards to me unless they're planning on opening a number seven, because I would love to just give us more and more ways of being able to pushing it uh, further, maybe make it a little bit more engaging where it's not just boring, where it's just like the same thing over and over again. I feel like that could potentially be like a Diablo Immortal issue where it's like, okay, we just did Hell 3 and then Hell 4, Hell 5. It's like, it gets boring. Whereas if they, they might need to do a different kind of boss, like some kind of rotation to make it engaging instead of just making it uh, more and more harder. But at least they're giving us good rewards for that too. So it's like, it's worth the, the effort uh, whereas some games, oh, here's a new thing, but then the reward sucks. So it's like, what's the point? So that's kind of how I was thinking about that, where it's like, okay, why is this so difficult? Yes, it probably does need a nerf, but at the same time, there's a lot of content that got dropped on us and it probably should take us a long time to be able to beat it, um, even though it does feel very difficult at the moment. And because it is a faction thing, probably pretty limiting based on the characters we have on there, depending on which faction you choose. Because imagine like choosing almost any other faction that doesn't have Catherine. This would be an absolute nightmare to try to beat. It also kind of makes me think that maybe Foresters have a good shot with like Luna being able to revive, but at the same time, the damage is so crazy that you're probably going to need a class that, or a faction that has crazy shields on here. So maybe that's not the case. Like uh, the damage is just so absurd that everyone dies. <laughs> so 
there's definitely that. Um, so I was thinking for progression, especially with the changes to Catherine here in the, what is it? The campaign quest. Obviously this is going to be the way you go and you've always should be focusing on Catherine before. I don't think it was like that even before I knew just how difficult this is. The big change that they made was they made it to where getting Catherine just takes a total amount of these marks, not getting to 23 and then beating 20, 26 on a Dwarven dungeon. So that's still the same, the 26. And I think it was kind of strange because uh, unless, well, there's two sides of it. Cause I think beating stage 26 is still the harder thing, but um, it used to be you would have to you had to be 23 and a lot of people would get gated on 20 because you need a shield remover to be able to do this for the most part. Like some some classes don't necessarily need that. I didn't need a shield remover to be 20 for this one because I had Slavelle and she just absolutely nukes down bosses by herself because she gets like 100 percent damage boost. But definitely going a little wider in your in your team now is probably going to be a little bit more advisable when it comes to progression in this game because of just how difficult this is and it takes a very long time to be able to get any rewards in this. And then we're going to be getting this stuff daily anyway. So just like make sure you're farming your daily tokens. But I think just keep that in mind. And based on the difficulty of this game at the moment, we this it needs to be like the full priority because you need to be able to make the eventually, ideally, you're going to want this one right here. This is going to take people a very long time to be able to get to 280 uh, Mark Tower shards because it's going to take mainly the thing. It's not hard content. What it is is it's gated by food, <laughs> so it's it's not like actually difficult here. Like if you get the characters for it, it, you're gated by characters because you need someone that can actually remove a shield for each mark, and then you also are gated by food and the leveling of the characters. Whereas in Faction Abyss, it's so hard that you're gated by not only the characters but you need the right characters for it. And even if you do, you might not be able to beat it. So uh, that, that's definitely a problem there. So just keep that in mind. But I am glad that they made it easier to get that initial Catherine because that initial Catherine really unlocks a lot of stuff for you. So then uh, mainly it just makes these dungeons so much easier so you can start farming these these the stage 26 ones. The reason why 26 is so nice is because it, it removes the ability to get four star gear and then you can actually really start to get good gear going forward. And then I would just be farming those every I would farm at every dungeon uh, in time with an event. That would be my way of doing this as a free to play. Also, we're going to be a have the ability to be able to save energy for each time so we can do that and then slowly be farming up the mythics slowly be farming up your gear per the events and then we can slowly loop back around and, and tackle the faction best so just wanted to talk about that on progression here when it comes to this because of just how difficult uh, Faction Abyss is. It's like super crazy that it's that difficult, but hopefully they nerf it a little bit so we can actually farm those uh, auras there to make the game a little easier for us because I think a lot of our characters are way weaker than they will be in the future because we pretty much have almost zero access to those auras there. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. Hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. And with that, guys, I'm out of here. Peace.